Hi everyone, it's Art, it's from Man Carpentry. In today's, today's video, we will be fitting door linings. I'll show you how to fit door lining. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, next job on the list. So, uh, I'll show you the way I'm doing it. Obviously, there will be other ways of doing it. In our case, unfortunately, we're going to have a quite thin door lining, but nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, um, I will set up and I will catch up for you in a moment. Right, the first job, what you're going to have to do is prepare your packers. Uh, so, what I like doing with the door linings is using not plastic packers but creating the wedge shape packers and reason being you can get a perfect adjustment because let's face it wood is not straight all the time so you know and if you've got a belly in the wood it's just easier to pack it with packers sliding along in a wee shape which brings your wood to where you want it to be so get a I don't know I've got off cut of this uh, if you go forward to or something like that, or if you're doing a lot of doors, maybe buy one length of four by two, um, or maybe you've got an off cut somewhere from another job, or keep them for your wedges for future. So I'll just cut these up. So depending on the uh, door lining width I'm, I'm fitting and depending on the gaps I got to to uh, pack, uh, usually I put, uh, I cut my um, wedges on chop saw because this is the safest way. You set up, so I usually set up like 6 degrees on a saw, like so. Then I put my lock against the guide rail. Then I check. Then I check. Depending on again thickness I need, where I want my cut to be, either to the point or five mil in, ten mil in, whatever you want to do. I in this case I think I should be okay with the point. And the next step is really to. next step is really to cut it so what I will be doing is like five millimeters in or four millimeters in so essentially what you have here is a packer which you can adjust by sliding two parts together so and this is the maximum you're gonna get or also you can go deeper uh, or further sorry so the first job I cut the packers second job you want to measure your uh, wall the width of the wall and trim your uh, lining accordingly <sighs> in this case I don't ha I don't need too much of the lip, I'll make it probably a couple of millimeters um, just in case because obviously that timber was not perfect as any timber is. So, just to allow for uh, arc drive uh, and adhesive on the new builds when you're gonna fit your linings before it gets plastered, I usually allow six millimeters wider door lining unless the roll is very bad and it needs bonding out because you want your door linings plumb as plumb as possible reason being if it's tilting one way or the other way when the door opens swings open it will it could potentially catch on the floor um, so depending obviously on what floors you're having what gaps you're having it could be very noticeable so ideal of all those is that you have it all plumb but we know the building is not ideal world 
So realistically, you something will be out. If your wall is good, it could be the floor is out, etc. And you know, more so as a bat. In general, I allow six millimeters. That is if the walls need to be skimmed. You can do about four millimeters if it needs to be filled. Uh, if it's like tape and jointed, tape and jointing or dry lining rather than plastering, skimming. Uh, so yeah, the next job for me is to cut the linings, which I'm gonna do now. I've got seven of them, so I'll, I'll cut them uh, and I will be back with you when I've done that. There's no point of filming it. Uh, it's just repetitive work, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna rip the linings and we'll, we'll see you in a bit. Next step. So next step for you is to uh, Check what height you need a floor uh, lining to be fitted because it really depends on the flooring you're gonna have. If it's gonna be carpet, uh, you need to allow 22 millimeters for door to be to clear the carpet or 23, maximum 25 of the floor. So the gap between the door bottom of the door to uh, the floor doesn't want to be more than say 20 two millimeters just in case because obviously the fluffier the carpet the more uh, the bigger gap you'll need but to be safe if you make it 20 22 millimeters of the floor um, of subfloor uh, for carpet will be fine same for engineered flooring saying that there are two thicknesses or several thicknesses starting from about uh, 14 millimeters going all the way to 21 22 millimeters so again you need to really know what product you're getting uh, in advance so you can set your linings to fit that or you can fit them at um, original height which is two meters of the floor lining sits if lining touches the floor it will give you two meters space to fit your door uh, and the doors on average are either 1980 or 1984 or 1985 so in within you know um, five mil difference depending on what sort of brand door it is and what that will give you it will give you respectively either 20 or 15 millimeters gap ish um, oh sorry 10 to 15 millimeters gap depending on what door you use because you're gonna have a two or three mil gap on the top uh, for the door to close so so yeah basically it will mean you're gonna have to trim your doors but I suppose if you're not sure what height or what sorry flooring has been used then it's better be said than sorry uh, but do factor that in in your price if you're doing on a price that you're gonna have to trim every door and if it's a lot of doors then obviously it will cost you time so um, factor those things in in my case uh, I might not be needing these um, wedges so much uh, maybe just small ones but I just thought I'd show you what I use usually because um, here I have done I fitted these with uh, with less tolerance. Usually, you allow like ten millimeters per door. Um, so here, I have allowed less, so I might need to use different packers. But I have tried to level them, so you know I can screw straight on it if need to be, which is what I'm gonna have to do here. So. So yeah, once you trim your lining to the size, uh, you need to screw it obviously together. I had to rip it down to 17 mil with my wall, so I'll just screw it like so, top and bottom, uh, uh, top and side, sorry, not bottom. Uh, so when you get a um, two foot doors, Linings aren't made for two foot doors, so you ask probably what what you mean not made. They don't have a slot for two foot doors, so you got two foot uh, nine and two foot six, 
and other measurements on these uh, lining sets don't come with it so you're gonna have to do your own uh, sort of measuring out and cutting out and whatnot so just bear in mind when you cut it off that what you do you allow for this gap as well so because these legs come uh, allowing for the gap so they come like five mil longer so it gives you that two meter run for the door two meter height sorry um, and also what you need to check before you fit especially when it's like this for me when I got seven doors in a row you need to check the height on the lowest door because the old slab is sort of up and down so I know that area is flat those three doors will be flat so I when I fit the lining in I need to make sure that it uh, is with the with with the highest door sorry so the highest door and then if I need to trim I'm gonna have to trim the other doors down to fit so just to make sure that there's those gaps aren't too big because I know in my case I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have a like a vinyl floor here or liner or something like that so it won't be any, any very thick uh, so hence why I will only have 10 millimeter gap uh, or I'm aiming for 10 millimeter gap on the floor so which will give like five six mil after liner is done um, yeah so uh, get your lining screwed on this lining I will use a two screws on a wider lining I use three can't sink them in um, can you use I don't know you could use um, 100 mil screws or 80 mil screws that will be fine if you want you can put PVA on on ends um, every little helps um, so yeah you don't have to but it helps um, and that's that so I'll proceed with screwing in and then I will offer in a position and after that we'll check all the uh, we'll, we'll um, put laser level on uh, and I'll check the heads and the heights to the floor to make sure when I fit it that we every all the doors look the same um, in regards to the floor so I don't have a bigger gap than I should do so I'll just make sure it's you know uh, working from that perspective and also I will set all linings in the same line so when I fit the architraves which I will make separate video for you um, when I fit them so then they all run you know same same way so there's no differences in heights and because that would look awful so yeah I'll uh, uh, catch up you in a bit right <clears throat> now you got your frame together set up laser level you can do it on a pole like I did if you got a cross laser level, it's ideal, then you can set up and fit with level, which I would suggest where possible. Uh, alternatively, if you don't have a laser level, you can use your traditional levels um, to get your plum and herd. But again, you need to trust your level um, to be able to use that to fit your lining but I'll use laser level in this case so as you can see on one side I've got a little packing to do on the other side is okay so knowing that I've fitted these uh, more or less straight I will try fix one side first and then I'll pack the other side so I'll try to use So we got this needs to come up a bit. So a little packer there. I'll put a little packer there. I will fix. Uh, I always when I fix, I start with the hinge side. So 
this will be a hinge side so I start with this uh, I know that my one of my bubbles is okay uh, so mainly the laser will I use to get head but also to double check that my plumb is plumb so I'll start with the hinge side it just me doing so uh, others might prefer doing the other way around but I usually fix the hinge side first and then I go around and fix the other side and that's just me but you can do it as, as you would like to do I, depending on how the actual lining is warped I will um, then fix the side which which is a uh, depending on which way it's warping so I've got belly in the middle so I'll do fix the bottom and then I can use packers to push it out flat Usually I do four fixings. So first two I do around 50 to 100 mil, depending on what what doors I'm having. And then I just try to put say 700 there or 750. Oh, I could do oh, about 600 down. Say 650. So 650 and 650. Once you've fitted this side, double check, and as you can, will see, there's a little gap here. So you now you can use the little gun there, so I'll undo the bottom fixing and I will use the folding wedges. So I undo that. and like that so with folding wedges you can get it to where you want it fairly easily so that's one side done other side other side you you know your most the head now just make sure it's where you want it, which it is. We need to lift it up slightly so we get the same catching slightly the frame. So I get folding wedge again and I just put it under the frame and position it where I where I need it. Now you can see the line skimming the same way in the frame. You can see here we we are like four mil in, so you spin this, spin this slightly, like so.
So this time our belly is in the middle. So what I'll do, I'll put the bottom first. I'll screw the bottom of the lining and that will let me, obviously because we have layers level, I can do that. I'll know where it needs to be. So you can see the line all the way or you can use level and hold it see there's a belly clearly so when you push in you can see where it wants to be yeah so what i'll do i'll mark my 600 down from the top mark it down Could be six fifty, we'll do six fifty. On the one fixing because the stud is just four uh, two by two and Lining is quite narrow, so I'm, I'm putting one in this sort of central. So you can place your wedge where you want, and then check by pushing it in. Check whether you're happy with where they position. If you are counting, take fixing, fix it in a position. Check again. If you're happy, I'm happy with that. I'll do the next one. Let's cut some more veggies. So I'll put this in again. I mean, check your level, how flat it is, or your leg level. So I fixed, fitted it. I put the two legs in, and by sliding you can adjust where you want it to be. And check on leg level. You can check either whatever you're going to use, laser or level, you can put this on, make sure the line is flat, which it is, and just repeat the process, count sink it, so double check, are you happy with all the There's a little belly, which is... You might have to put extra fixings, like in my case, because there's a little belly here. You don't have to necessarily put back behind that. That is more for pulling it in a position. It's got obviously a little belly. And that now should be good. Yeah, it's good. And that is good too. The only trouble is being so thin walls and the lining it might have a little belly which you might struggle to get out the reason being is because obviously the walls are thin 
they will give in a bit more but in general those are the things I would suggest first of all make your lining slightly wider it allows easier for you know in professions and walls and to get your art waves on secondly get your wedges cut uh, not necessarily you need to use laser level that's uh, like an act you know if you addition if you got it it's great you can get your heads through um, otherwise you're gonna have to use level which you know if it's not accurate it might might not be accurate at the end when you get to the last door or last lining uh, you can use either laser level or level uh, sometimes sometimes if you like you can make like use a doorstop or something to put across parallel with the top measurement um, I don't do it because usually legs aren't uh, flat anyway they go belly so it doesn't really make any difference I don't think it doesn't make it any easier anyway to fit lining so I usually put my hinge side in first then trade the head if need to be pack it up uh, so it's in our plan which I've done uh, and what I would usually do if I don't use laser level I would mark uh, draw a line on a, on a wall where my head needs to be and I would take it all the way through again if I don't have laser level, I would take it all the way through with the level and I would go with underside measurement for myself personally but you can do it as you like uh, and after that head I put in the handle side of the lining uh, after getting the head level so first I personally for myself always fix the hinge side but you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it you can do it either side but I just personally what I do because uh, if for instance your hinge side is correct plumb and the other side isn't you can always undo whilst the door is on uh, so that that takes us straight to another um, thing you need to know never fill over the holes before you fit the doors because sometimes you need to just minor adjust it and if you have filled the holes then you you know you need to undo your work uh, and yeah it's just extra work for you to do afterwards so i always tell to painters if you got painters on site fill fill the holes only after the doors are done uh, and yeah so that's how I um, do the linings. Forgot to mention that when I put my folding wedges, I put them behind the uh, fixings. Reason being so they get fixed and that way you make sure they don't fall out. Uh, if there's, you know, plastering and drawing and whatnot going on, they tend to, you know, get loose after a while. Also, I use, um, a board fixing foam to foam the gaps a it helps insulating like sound wise and b it, it you know sticks the frame as well as your fixings so you know it's a win-win and it won't you know it won't take a lot so it'd be a can probably for doors depending on also the gaps but in general if you got 10 third wheel gaps then that was should shouldn't be too much uh, so yeah that's what i wanted to say uh, as you can see obviously i've made some progress and i haven't been filming all of it but i've um, you know been doing it as i said i would do is use level uh for the hinge side first plan it in get the last level set up for the head height uh, for heads uh, to get them all in line especially when you got so many doors in a row as I do and yeah but alternatively you could use laser level with cross laser and do it that way if it's easier for you you know it's entirely up to you 
Also, what I would suggest if you're doing a lot of linings, get the two meter level or 195 or something like that, 195 long, because then what that allows you, it allows you to fit your level all the way up from top to bottom pretty much. Because with 1.8 level, sometimes you get a belly because it doesn't go all the way up, so it goes like that. And it's it eventually you can feel it when you hang the door because those the doors are nearly two meters and levels 200 mil shorter so you don't actually you could miss that there's a you know a bow or something in a lining so or alternatively if you prefer you can use lace level as i said but you know each to their own um i'm used to doing it that way but yeah you're more than welcome using level as i said so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch up with you in the next video.